No one like this Jesus is not to be compared with any power that you have ever known. Right? It cannot be compared with any authority you have ever heard of. The debt that no man could have been able to pay, Jesus paid it. Paid it for you and paid for me so that we can have eternal life. So that we can go to heaven when we die from here. When we finish our work so that we can get in there. He said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I'm through, what will I do? I will come back and take you unto myself so that where I am, there, you will be also. This is our faith and this is our expectation. This is our hope. The seventh word of the Lord Jesus on the cross says, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. This is the hour of separation. Jesus Christ was to be separated at this hour. The soul, the spirit will go somewhere. The body will be left somewhere. Separation. When a man dies, that man is separated from his family. Not so? Not only from his family, he is also separated from himself. The body becomes an entity somewhere and the spirit goes another place. Jesus here, this hour was the hour Death separated him, broke him apart. And as I look at this last word, when Jesus said to the Father, into your hand I commit my spirit, you look the first part of that verse. First part says, Jesus did what? Called out with a loud voice. That's the first part. That's Luke 23 now. You are not there. Open now. Get your Bible. Open it. You have not been reading Bible. Open it. Luke 23. 46. Are you there now? Read it. Jesus called out with what? A loud voice. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Now, look at the first part. Calling out with a loud voice. This is a man who, who, as we see it, has become very weak after the beating and beating and beating throughout yesterday, overnight, then carrying the cross to where he was now carrying the nails on his palms and legs and the crown on his head, bleeding and with that scorching song, eating him on the cross. I am believing that at this moment, Jesus should have no strength to cry with a loud voice that people could hear. But Jesus gathered all that was remaining in him. Everything, he put them 
together and he opened his mouth and cried with a loud voice, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. Why should he shout? Why should he cry? You know why? The reason is the issue of where your spirit goes to. The issue of where your spirit is separated to is very, very crucial. Very crucial. And Jesus wouldn't want to make a mistake. You heard which, which, uh, which of those words now, whether the fourth word or so, where the man of God said, is it, is it the fourth word now? What is the fourth word the other time? Aloko, what did you say? The fourth word is what? Huh? Uh -huh. When Aloko was telling us about my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And the man of God tried to tell us that forsaking Jesus by the father, meaning Papa had turned his back. The sin, the load of sin of the world that Jesus carried, Papa could not behold his son carrying this load. I don't want to say was in doubt, but at this crucial moment, wanted a guarantee, wanted an assurance, wanted to be satisfied that his spirit goes to no wrong place. Then who are you and I? Not to struggle, not to fight, not to be sure, not to deliberately make effort to put our spirit into the hands of God. And you look at our world today, people go to sell their soul to the devil in the name of courtism or making money or becoming a star in the society. They enter into covenant and their spirits are handed over to the man that will take care of their spirit who will receive their spirit on the last day. What a pity. The son of man. Now Jesus with the talk so, he had to cry. He had to shout. Even when there was no strength again, he garnered everything. Father! Please, there are some things that Anglican church we need to overlook now. In the moment of silence, let us pray for our nation. Nigeria, in the moment of silence, let us pray for our family. In the moment of silence, let us pray for our, our spouses. In the moment of silence, let us go for the communion. You see, every time you need to be silent in prayers. There are some things that will provoke you to shout. Not all the time, the moment of silence. And as we know it from where we are coming from, in the moment of silence is actually the moment of sleep a little before service continues. When you say the grace, people then wake up. The service continues. Jesus shouted. When you pray sometimes, shout to oh, praise the Lord. Shout sometimes. If the devil did deafened, he will his ears will be open and he will know that there is war somewhere. And if there is a demon standing in the gate of where your prayer should break through, your shouting sometimes should bring the devil down. Amen. Amen. Today is not a day of shouting, but Jesus shouted here. A loud voice to your hand. Can I remind you? Sorry, let me ask you a question. Have you ever dreamt with a dream? Put your hand. Waver. If you don't dream once. You don't dream once? Okay, put down your hand. Who dreamt last night? Last night, I dream. Oh, I dreamed last night. You can see your hand. We still have some people. Before the, before the election result was made known, one of our women here came to me and said, I had a dream. And I, I saw the president-elect now holding microphone and announcing to Nigeria some things. 
Praise the Lord. That's what somebody came to tell me. That's a dream. But that person was lying down in bed, Abby. But something left that bedroom to somewhere. Put your hand on your chest and say, my spirit. My spirit. Not travel anyhow. So if you have ever had a dream before, you are lying down, you are taking your rest out of the day's toiling, and you have a dream, and you appear in America, in UK, in your village, in your old primary school, your old secondary school, or sometimes you appear in the water world, other times in the coven. <laughs> that's, that's, that is separation. That is a moment and hours of separation. You are no longer together. So when you have a dream, let's go, please follow me. If you have a dream and your spirit travels like that, six o'clock, your spirit has not come back to your body. 9.30 in the morning, the spirit has not come. 12.30, in the afternoon, you are still there. By two o'clock, what should be happening to you? See the thing? You can see how important your spirit is. Your spirit is the one that traveled. And it must not overstay when it is dream to come back. If it overstays, your heart will soon stop to function. And your body will begin to decompose because a permanent separation has been caused. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Amen. See, every man has a spirit. Can I remind you what I keep saying in church? That even as you are a Christian, you are in cathedral, church has a spirit which must possess you. If the spirit of the church has not possessed you, you cannot be a good Christian. The spirit that Jesus handed over to the Father is the spirit of the church. Oh, You must have alliance with that spirit. If not, on the day that your body and your soul will be separated, nobody go fear escort you go the right place. Oh. Because you may not even have opportunity to say, my father, into your hand, I commit. You may not have that opportunity. But if you are in alliance, in friendship, relationship with the spirit of the man who knows the way, who has committed his own spirit to the father. And when he further needed that spirit, father released him again into the body and he came out on, on Sunday, which is resurrection day. He knows the road. If you put your spirit in his hand, you cannot miss your way. Follow who know road, though. <laughs> Jesus cried in a loud voice, Father, into your hand I commit my spirit. Stand up, let us pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.